Anybody seen Charles Benton? You just walk that way. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be right back. Well, if you put him last, we can see his Okay. I'd like to welcome everyone to the final session of our 2012 East Chicago Conference. It's a bold uh, and yet we think effective uh, tactic to seize control of the concept East Chicago. We are not a corporation. We are not a government agency but an educational program tied to all those people in Chicago who otherwise might not be represented. Because what we're looking for is for the concept of digital technology to provide a bridge to a future we've never had in the history of Chicago or the history of any city. And that is for the entire citizenry in all neighborhoods. And in Chicago, the word neighborhood has a specific meaning. Uh, because of the residential segregation that has historically been the pattern of life in this city. So the Polish immigrants live one place, the Irish another place, the Mexicans another place, the Puerto Ricans another place, the African Americans another place. In fact, for African Americans, sometimes it's what part of Mississippi did you come from in a particular neighborhood. So neighborhoods, uh, this is a city of neighborhoods. And so to talk about equality across the neighborhoods uh, with digital technology, we're not limiting it to digital technology. We're talking about potholes in the streets. We're talking about garbage collection. We're talking about signage. We're talking about all those things that make a city equal in, in reality. That's how serious this conversation is. And we are interested in imagining a future that has never been. Sort of like what Langston Hughes said. Let America be America again. The land it never has been yet and yet must be. The land where everyone is free. And so that's the concept we're, we're coming at. It's a bold idea. It's an idea that challenges all people of privilege and power because it suggests a reorganization of that privilege and power to be shared by everyone. This is the goal, this is the dream. And so this final session is about that. Now just before we get into this session, a couple of points of, uh, of information. Uh, somebody who has a very tiny and neat oh. handwriting. <laughs> okay. Now that should give us some indication that problems can be solved. <laughs> okay. The other thing is uh, we have uh, all forms of media being used. This is a comic book about the Cyber Navigator program in the Chicago Public Library System. And it was done by a uh, combination of faculty and students at the uh, University of Illinois. In fact, one faculty member and one student um, have careers making comic books, which as we know are uh, very important. Uh, it, it, the comic book is a very important ICT. And uh, just as the comic strips are important. My father used to uh, buy all the Chicago newspapers when we grew up, because he liked to read the comic strips. And I still read the comic strips. Uh, and I have to educate some of the more intellectual elites that they better read the comic strips if they want to know what people in the society are thinking. It's just like watching TV. You know, if you don't watch TV, then you're out of touch with what the majority of people in the country are dealing with in terms of what their discourse really is. And we don't respond to that. We take ourselves above that, and therefore we miss, and there's a divide, and we, figure, we try to figure out how come we can't communicate with you know the phrase, the American people. So it's a very important conversation we're having. Well, these people are very important who are on the panel today. Activists in their own right, thinkers more important than any particular activity they're engaged in, uh, and we are called in this session to listen carefully to them, to challenge them as a way of challenging ourselves. Uh, 
uh, because what we're doing right now is not only summing up this conference, we're planning next year's conference. And everyone here is being called upon right now to reconstitute this gathering as a planning session, as a group of consultants who have been thinking about this conference, and everybody here has loved it and had a criticism of it. And therefore, what we want is those criticisms to lead into making next year a better conference. We don't want people to go away thinking they're the ones that are smart and know the, the fallacy of what we've done and pat themselves on the back. We want you to contribute that so we can make it a better conference. I hope everybody can feel me on this, because we need a better conference. OK, to the panel. You've got their bios, so I'm not going to go into their bios. They're all important, and they've all done a lot. <laughs> uh, and we're going to have them uh, speak in very short presentations according to the questions in the program so that we can have as much interaction as possible. And so the first speaker is going to be Alejandro. And we can all give him a hand. Good afternoon. Um, I've been part of Chicago from the beginning for the last six years. Uh, in the last two years, I've been part of the closing panel. I think both uh, Abdul and Kate uh, seem to think that I contribute something, although sometimes I'm not so sure. But having said that, I think the fact that Abdul started off with a quote about challenges is important. And there's another side to that. Because our challenge as community practitioners around the digital divide and digital inequality is to challenge those that are voiceless and those that are powerless. How do we change the culture of digital inequality? Uh, it's not a straight linear equation. It's not just about policy. How do we engage our communities which are marginalized, oppressed, who have a history of resistance to the marginalization and oppression to engage in something as perhaps as tedious or esoteric, they may think, as the digital divide, as learning either how to program or learning how to produce content. I think that this moment, as Abdul started saying, is one to remember that the digital divide is in some ways the intersection of a series of divides, historical, chronological, and political divides, certainly class and race, gender, sexual orientation, but I think that one of those things that we have to remember is all about a quote. Being in the same room, and actually I think I learned this in your classroom uh, many years ago, Bill. Um, Malcolm X had a very famous quote, and when asked about being an American, and I think this is in 1964, uh, he said, being in America doesn't make you an American if you don't enjoy the full rights of citizenship. Sitting at a dinner table doesn't make you a diner if there's no food. You can extend the analogy, the metaphor, to the digital divide to say, what do we need now in our communities? Those of us that are community practitioners, that dabble in education, uh, to say, what do we need to fulfill our part of closing the digital divide? I think there's, we've talked about during the conference, the potential transformation of the pu public libraries. I think there has to be an extension, right, and all of this will cost money, of course, there has to be an extension and a deeper partnership with community, private, from elementary and high school and university libraries, right, to fleshing out a picture where we see both the community not, as a, not only as a campus, but as a technological engagement for the formation of tech roundtables between community not-for-profits, merchants, high schools, teachers, residents, in which the voiceless become part of the voice to say this is what we need for our children to know. Where parents, grandparents, cousins learn, hey, let's not buy that Xbox 360, let's buy an iPad for our kids. Let's buy something, right, that will help work that out. How do we start to change our side of the equation? I think this moment calls for a new round of federal and private grant and loan making uh, to develop digital and community-based initiatives around empowering organizations and communities. 
I think there has to be four questions, and then I'll close. Four questions that we ask ourselves, what is, how can we help change education, public education, from elementary, high school, and university levels to collaborate more around communities? How can we change the face of public computing where there's either a private and partner, private and public partnership to accelerate creation of many more public computing centers? That remains the core question for us. How do we get our kids, our families, our grandparents right, into public computing centers to begin to learn or mentor these skills? Public health, how do we start to engage community organizations around the oncoming technological revolution in public health? Because otherwise, we will be left behind. And our communities with astronomical rates of diabetes, of obesity, cannot and should not be left behind. Lastly, I would say that it calls upon all of us, the education, the academics, the community practitioners, how do we begin to envision, and this is again uh, what Abdul had said, a place where not only are we challenged, but we are as communities in a position to have a voice and to challenge not only those with power, but those with different ideas. We are in this position because we have not done that and we have not, we have been told we cannot do that. Perhaps that's the question. Thank you.
we do it all. Uh, we serve as the heart of community life. And I think of us as an essential service. I haven't quite gotten that across to some, some people in, uh, that hand out the money. Uh, but I think it is an essential service. And every day we're, we're proving that as we go along. Um, as such, I think we need to be engaging our community and always listening. John Spears reminded us to measure outcomes. A lot of people are checking the, the numbers that come in the door or the numbers of programs that we're offering. And he says, well, you've got to have outcomes too. I think he's right. Uh, he's right on. We have to uh, say, okay, we've had these job programs. So, okay, are people getting jobs? Are they, are they benefiting from this? Are the children reading? And let that be part of as Joey Mack mentioned too, uh, be uh, part of what we're counting there so we can show that they're, we're winning, we're winning, we're making a difference. And our friend Abdul talked about uh, the purpose of him. Why, why bigger broadband? Uh, why more access to the internet? It's not just about economic development. It can't be just that. Not for us. Uh, it's also literacy and ultimately freedom. Uh, and uh, to preserve our democracy. Education empowers, and we all know that. Kara Kennedy uh, and, and Joey Mack talked about the program, the DCEO Digital Divide Elimination Grants that, they, um, that go out every year, the D, uh, DCEO coordinates it. Uh, Kara is working one-on-one -on -one with those little CTCs, some of them, I think of them as the little engines that could, trying to train people who haven't had that access to a computer or training and, and need it so desperately to help bring them up to speed so they're doing an even better job and getting better outcomes. Um, it's important work and she did encourage us all to work together and we're hoping. My friend Charles Benton, I think, invented this term, the silo busting hoping that this year will be the year we finally address the, that um, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. No, it's all of ours. It's all for the common good. We're, we can all work together, state and local government, and public libraries, and nonprofits, and the business sector, all of us working together. Now, my takeaways from today, I won't tell you what to take with you, which sessions or ideas to take with you. Instead, I want to encourage you wherever you go after this, to heed the words of our friend Booker T. Washington, and this is one of my favorite quotes, one of my favorites of all time, to put your bucket down where you are. Put it down where you are. Get to work where you are. Look around your neighborhood. Uh, connect with your community. Take the tools and examples uh, from East Chicago that work for you, or come up with your own ideas. Uh, use them to build a better community wherever you are. Do what you can in your neighborhood to empower, enrich, educate, and eliminate the digital divide. Make connections, work with others to fix local problems, uh, build community, and grow your digital and other services to fit your end users. And I want to congratulations are in order today. We have a, some really exciting news. Because Charles Benton just learned that he's been appointed by President Obama uh, as a director of the Institute of Museum and Library Services. So let's have a round of applause. Wow. He got through the Senate, guys. It's incredible. <laughs> this is incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to do this in the, from the sitting position. Uh, uh, this is, I'm also, I uh, got in the habit of this meeting and was at the first one. I think I've been to five of the six. I missed one uh, in, in, in the, in the wrap-up role. I remember in the first conference, uh, all the wrap-up folks were from higher education institutions, and I said, well, uh, Kate, I, I'm not an academic chair. What, what am I doing on this wrap-up panel? And she said, well, Charles, I think you could do it. So just listen and uh, tell us what you hear. And uh, so uh, uh, 
have gotten into the habit here uh, of, of uh, this wrap-up role. I'm going to uh, follow uh, uh, the dictates of the program here. Uh, uh, as you'll note on page 6 here, uh, session 16, developing our vision, it says uh, what three main points of the common need to be remembered, uh, what is your personal E-Chicago goal for next year, and what should E-Chicago 2013 be all about? So I'm going to try to address those points. Uh, and in terms of the conference, there's no way, absolutely no way, to summarize the richness uh, of the meeting. But let me say first uh, how wonderful uh, uh, to have a number of your students here, because the students are the future. Uh, and uh, I just think it's, it's fabulous that uh, our, our, our uh, students from China, I mean, you know, imagine this conference uh, covering from uh, hip hop to China. I mean, now there's quite a range, you got to admit. <laughs> and I think it's very exciting. I, 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 I got into the, uh, I was going to do the China session, but not, then I got attracted, and I'm very glad I did, to the, uh, uh, the neighborhood uh, of Washington, because it's one of my three specifics. Uh, so uh, I want to start with the first uh, point. I, I was uh, went to the uh, second panel, does Illinois have high school internet, or are we using it? And that was a very interesting range of uh, presentations about different projects uh, across the state. One I knew nothing about, and I'd never heard of, was presented by Tracy Felty, mm -hmm. uh, uh, who represented uh, uh, um, Harrisburg, Illinois, and uh, uh, his um, was uh, Celine County uh, E911. I've been hearing a lot about uh, public safety, and I know that uh, there's the uh, push. Uh, from the sale of Spectrum, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to invest in a new nationwide public safety network. I don't know anything about this, really. Uh, however, here was Tracy uh, talking about a national pilot project uh, in Southern Illinois covering 16 counties uh, that has been growing up for a long time. And I thought his description of this project was just inspiring. So uh, I came up afterwards and I said, uh, Tracy, let's have lunch. So we went off and had lunch and I told it in Diane Bowe, who's the coordinator of the LISC Smart Communities Initiative, uh, uh, and uh, uh, to this lunch, uh, uh, and also uh, Roxanne and Ryan. Roxanne, where, where are you? Uh, Roxanne is the head of our communications staff member at PCI, I live in Springfield. Uh, we're so delighted you're here, Roxanne, it's uh, great. Anyway, so we had lunch, uh, uh, and, uh, and the idea that, uh, that uh, we were brainstorming, uh, because um, I, the day before, yesterday, I had, uh, I, with Pierre Clark, uh, making the connect, uh, I had a lunch with Reverend Grazier, Crazier, uh, who's the running this broadband, uh, or in fact, I'm sorry, running the whole economic development program for uh, um, Woodlawn, and Laura Lane, who's his full time uh, uh, Northwestern law degree broadband person, really impressive. Uh, and uh, and uh, Reverend Grazier said, Well, look, our whole push for economic and community development is based on three things education. And we've just uh, negotiated a deal with the, uh, with the Chicago city schools to take over the uh, schools, uh, the eight elementary schools and uh, one high school in the Woodlawn area. So we would be uh, having a leadership role on these schools, number one. Number two, public safety, because of the uh, neighborhood uh, uh, the challenge, uh, public safety in the Woodlawn area, uh, and health. So I'm saying, gee whiz, Tracy, uh, you've got a great model down there in Illinois. Maybe 
maybe this 911 effort of yours could uh, migrate into uh, the Woodlawn area. Let's 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 talk about this. Let's raise about this. Well, uh, we we had a very interesting discussion. We're going to follow up. So that was the first point. And uh, but I think Tracy, uh, I don't know how you found Tracy, but boy, I want to qualify. Uh, on the 911, and uh, he was trying to get people's attention in Springfield, and he met with Senator Durbin in Washington. I mean, you know, this guy is amazing. Uh, and there's lots of things we can do to help him. So, uh, by the we, I'm talking about the partnership for Grand Hill, Hawaii, which I chair, and, uh, uh, and so that happened. Uh, that, uh, okay, point number two, Greg Wasp. It is a great credit to you that Greg uh, uh, gave us yesterday afternoon uh, because he is uh, as much the policy and uh, get it done mover and shaker on information in Cook County, and I will add in Chicago, as is in the area. And uh, Greg comes here with uh, not only his government role, but uh, with um, uh, uh, academic sensibility because he's actually teaching a course uh, and in addition to being CIO over Cook County, he's teaching a course here uh, and he laid out and I thought his comments on the information and the thing that the revolution direct and the uh, his topic was public policy and the information revolution in Cook County. What a wonderful idea to lay out the information, the revolution direct, the revolution indirect. I mean, it was great. He's obviously given a lot of thought to this. And so he was bringing intellectual, making an intellectual contribution here, as well as just telling a story. Uh, and it was terrific. But he said something to me that uh, is enormously helpful to me in, uh, uh, as, uh, again, as, uh, in my role with Parchment in Illinois, <coughs> when he was talking about uh, the private sector in the context of the new announcement of the CTA and uh, the county sharing fiber. Now, this is a big deal. I mean, they should have been doing this a long time ago, honestly. But, you know, better late than never. So this notion of sharing the, uh, public, the public investment in, uh, in, in fiber uh, with the CTA and being able to access and use that, I mean, really exciting. So he was having conversations with Comcast and AT&T, uh, who are the, I like to call them 5,000 pot gorillas. And you know, AT&T uh, used to own uh, uh, five million landlines five years ago. I don't know what the current statistics are. Uh, and, and Verizon was next with 750, and all the rest then uh, providers are 200,000 plus. So AT&T is the predominant telco, and of course Comcast uh, is the predominant cable provider. Uh, but, so in a meeting with Comcast, he, says, he quoted, he said, quote, why are you, county, uh, doing this yourself and not buying from us? Okay. That's our business. Well, his answer, his answer is it's a financial decision. We can either buy or we can lease. And, and the question for us is, what is the least cost network for taxpayers? I love it. I absolutely love it. So what he's doing is he's using private sector budget for the public sector. We're going to use that. I mean, this is, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, this is very helpful. We're dealing because we're under a lot of pressure from the uh, uh, telcos, the uh, Illinois uh, Telecommunications Association and the Illinois Cable Association, who are saying, well, well, why are you talking mainly about these uh, public networks and why aren't you in, in working more with the private sector and blah, blah, blah? Well, this is a wonderful argument. I love it. Good for you, Greg. We love it. So that's my second point. Uh, third point. Um, I started, I started at the China session and I just, I couldn't get with it, and so I, I said, well, there, I mean, it was the only, the only the, the, the schedule where I had a real conflict, because I wasn't, I thought, since uh, Kate and, and her husband have been in China, and, and we've got uh, uh, our, our friends here, uh, I, 
just I just couldn't stick with it. And I said, okay, I'm going to try this technology in the hood. Well, I came in right while Elizabeth Rosas led uh, the Resurrection Project was, uh, was rolling out her report. It was inspiring. So after her report, I said, uh, uh, Elizabeth, what are you doing for lunch? <laughs> so we, so she, well, I got Luis, I get a technology uh, organizer. I uh, said, so hold him in. So Pierre Clark uh, and Elizabeth Louis, uh, Louis and Roxanne and I went down and had lunch. Well, the idea was very simple. Uh, uh, she has a fabulous model in the Hispanic community. I mean, it really is. Now, I mean, it's outstanding. You know, you get a lot of rhetoric, folks. But she had a chapter in verse. It was all plain English, no BS. I mean, it was it was it was just it was really very persuasive. Uh, and so uh, the first point I said to her is, look, I know there are 310. There are 310. Uh, th I said 310 is actually 320, 19, as you said, uh, 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 Joey. Uh, uh, projects that have been uh, submitted to EDP. I don't know how many, and uh, at, at least half of these are from Chicago. I don't know how many of these are touching on Hispanic uh, neighborhoods. But since Hispanic population is about 40%, I mean, they, it's, it's a huge uh, part of the city. Uh, you know, how can you first look at uh, the other, uh, both successful grantees and the people that are that were, that were applied but didn't were not successful in the Hispanic community, and try to provide some coordinating leadership. So, what are the best practices? What, uh, you know, some convening. What do we learn from each other? How can we you know, make progress on this? And maybe you know you could uh, take a lead in this. The Resurrection Project, 20 years old. Well, geez, there's Pierre. Pierre has the total history and background because he's uh, Pierre's been at this for for uh, I, I, I don't know how long I've been been at this for uh, uh, 20 years, and he had the outline of the Hispanic the structure of the Hispanic community and the people that should that she should reach out to to bring uh, into this, because of course the key question uh, here is is from her model, uh, which is one of the list of models. How can we take what she's doing and take it to scale? Because these are pilot projects. It's just the beginning. We're just trying to work, trying to, you know, trying to work things out. The key question is, if we're successful in these pilot projects, how do you take it to scale? And that's not, uh, and it isn't just that, that everyone's going to flock to you and say, oh, we've got a successful project. We're going to throw money at you and, and so on and so on. No, that's a good plan. So, um, uh, so both with the EDD grantees contributing uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 the Pierre said it best, Pilsen is the logical place to exert the leadership uh, of the Hispanic community in general and uh, he was that. So they're going to follow up uh, and that's my, that was my third specific. Uh, so I, I, I love meeting these uh, successful models uh, and getting acquainted with where it's going next steps. Uh, it is great. So let me spend a few final minutes here on uh, uh, next year. Kate, you've got a terrific um, mechanism here in East Chicago to reach out to and mobilize uh, the research community in, uh, you call it informatics, uh, but in technology more generally. Uh, in the last two years, three hundred fifty million dollars has come into the state uh, to uh, uh, pay for um, uh, ninety percent of which to pay for uh, infrastructure, new broadband infrastructure, uh, with five projects across the state, um, and it's been our strategy at the at PCI, partnership with Edwin Roy, to to try to pick a research partner for each of these uh, infrastructure projects. The key question on this, as it is with the smart communities, is 
what difference does the funding make? You know, what, what, you know we, we, we build these models and pilots and, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and the government, uh, I think, uh, very wisely uh, has invested in infrastructure for unserved and underserved populations, which means they weren't being served by the private sector. And if, we, and, if the, and if the ultimate goal is universal broadband, that is broadband for everybody, the private sector alone is not going to do it. They're just not going to cut it. So we got to work together. It's got to be a combination of government, the not-for-profits, and the private sector all working together. That is the only way. So I think in next year's conference, it would be very interesting to get a report from each of the research partners that we have around these infrastructure projects. And also, ask the very important question is how does the, the research around the fundamental question of what are the economic and social impacts of these investments? That's the question. What are the economic and social impacts of these investments? Uh, how does uh, this, how does the data that they're collecting together yeah, relate to the statewide data? statewide supply data, which, we were, which we've been able to work with all of the providers. AT&T was boycotting us until 10 days before the last deadline. When they found out that everybody else was supplying data, they changed their mind. Isn't that one? So we have supply side data coming in from all the, the, uh, the providers, and we've hired SMG uh, to do the demand data uh, on uh, Princeton uh, for uh, uh, anchor institutions, businesses, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and homes. So how does the statewide data that we're providing free relate to the project data? And how do we learn from these investments uh, about what is working and where are the best practices and uh, where are the opportunities for the future? Uh, work and investment on the part of the government, the not-for-profit sector, especially foundations, and the private sector. I think that's the bottom line question for next year. Uh, and you have a wonderful forum here. But there's only one thing wrong with it. It's too few people. <laughs> we got to get a larger audience, and we got to we got to get organized, perhaps over here, and promote this better. But this room should be full. And by the way, in terms of the uh, uh, the, uh, the audience on the internet, uh, maybe next year with, again, organization at a time, that there could be an interactive component so that we could not only have a passive audience on the internet, but we can get feedback from folks out there. We have that. We have it. In Twitter. Uh, uh, Twitter. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. Invisible <laughs> discussion. Invisible. Anyway, I think the technology, we could both get a larger audience and we could probably do more with technology. But that all requires advanced planning. And hey, well, look, Roxanne uh, is a graduate of just this, in part, in fact, co-graduate, which is still with combining journalism and, uh, and library science. Uh, so we've got someone in Springfield uh, who can work with you on this. But let's work together and give a plan and board in advance for next year and try to you know, use this venue as a way of making a real impact and also a venue of accountability. You know, what have folks done with all this uh, funding out there, and what difference does it make? I think that's the core, and that's the bottom line question. And it's a real question that researchers can get their teeth into. So they're doing research that really will inform the world and help us figure out what to do next. Thank you. How many people here do not have this comic book? Raise your hands. Abby will give you one. Now, I would like to uh, ask, uh, slightly, have a slightly different uh, organization at this final session, and that is I would like 10 to 15 people at least to answer the question, what would you like to see in the conference next year? And then I want to ask, the panel to respond. We don't have time for a lot of Q&A back and forth, so I want to make sure we get as much of your voices 
Some of you have been sitting here listening for two days. And uh, you out there, you could Twitter. But we need to have your involvement, because if you speak, that's one step towards your own commitment to actually be part of building the conference for next year. Now, I want to start by saying what I'd like to see next year is a greater role uh, for people who represent hip hop and rap. And I'm sorry to say that uh, all the people I want to speak to aren't particularly hearing me at this moment, which says something about whackness in people's consciousness because you can't be, uh, have flow over here and then segregate yourself from sharing that flow with everybody. So that's really what my proposal is. Uh, in Toledo, Ohio, we did a mixtape on information technology. And uh, what we need to do is to recruit our cultural producers uh, to spread the message and to uh, help enlighten all of us, not only about how you see the world, but bringing those people who see it the way you see it to be up in here so we can all share it. That is the point. The point is that we have to make all of Chicago welcome in the eChicago conference. And so I'd like to have each of you come to the mic and uh, express what you'd like to see in the conference next year. Come up. And Kate Williams, who's the uh, chair of this conference, will make concluding remarks. I can hang either one. Good. Okay, now, those we don't have time just to be waiting, so everybody uh, prepare to come up. Let's make a line. It's also part of our vision. Yeah. Yes, good evening. My name is Greg Gates. I'm a social worker and working with uh, the reentry population, mainly juveniles. So I would like to see in the next uh, East Chicago conference uh, more inclusion of juveniles and, and, and uh, formerly incarcerated citizens so that uh, uh, this technology can uh, be used at that level. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Peace, my name is uh, Professor D.U.S. Uh, so answering your call to respond uh, as, as a, as a hip-hop uh, artist and, and activist. Um, and I apologize for not having been here for the whole conference, uh, both because I would have liked to have been here, but second, because that would you know, inform uh, my, my comments. So it's very provisionary. I don't know how much of what I'm going to suggest is already being talked about. Uh, but I just want to make a brief comment about all the presentations uh, which we've had here were, were very informative, interesting, engaging. Uh, but there's this uh, continual nod to the um, to the private sector uh, and you know this partnership with the private sector, which although important, uh, I wonder uh, how much. And again, I don't know uh, how much of the antagonism uh, between the interests of the private sector versus you know the public interest has been addressed at the conference. And in particular, I just want to, uh, I'll give a very brief 30-second uh, anecdote. Um, I'm from Canada, so coming, I'm also a U.S. citizen. I'm an international <laughs> radical. Uh, but coming to the U.S., uh, I think it's real funny. You know, we always, you know, we joke about, uh, about uh, the, the connotations of socialism in the U.S., but I, I, I was uh, sitting in a restaurant. I won't name the restaurant because it's a bad restaurant. But I was sitting in a restaurant uh, uh, not so long ago, um, and there was, I had a conversation with, uh, with a couple elderly African-American women. Uh, they were talking about Obama. One of them really liked Obama. One of them didn't. Um, I got into a conversation about, uh, about Obama with them. Uh, and, uh, and somehow, the, you know, the, the one who didn't like him said, well, yeah, but he's a socialist. And I said, and I said, so you know, so so let's explore what's what's the negative connotation with socialism. And you know, she didn't know very much about what socialism was. But I said, do you guys like public libraries? And they're like, yeah, she's one hundred percent supportive of public. Well, that's socialism. That is antagonistic to the interests of the public sector that doesn't want information to be freely available to people. So I would like to see the, that antagonism addressed. Okay. And the rest. We need more, more speakers. Just a functional note uh, on the Make the Twitter interactive. Maybe we can have some screens up that are showing the live feed so that folks can raise some questions that way on the virtual front. Maybe that can happen next year later. Um, first, I just want to say thank you. This is my first conference, and this was really an incredible experience. And I think there's been some incredible issues that have been examined here. And the one thing that I'd like to see 
in forthcoming years would be um, probably more representation from the suburbs. Because I think a lot of the issues that are being discussed in terms of Chicago, while they're, it actually almost points to the fact that there is at times a divide between the suburbs and Chicago in terms of how they each perceive each other. And the, uh, most of the people that I, that I saw here from my, my peers in suburban libraries, I don't know how many people here are from suburban libraries right now. Okay, how many people were here from a suburban library that didn't present? Um, I think that almost every, like what we just saw, everyone here from a suburban library was either a presenter or, or was here with someone. And if you could look at what's going on in communities like uh, Waukegan, uh, Joliet, Aurora, e even moving further out into communities like Sycamore, there's some really incredible things that I think could be brought to this conference by, by more participation from them. I'm using the, uh, the bully pulpit to uh, appoint John to be one of the organizers for the suburban participation in next year's East Chicago Conference. Thank you for your volunteering. <laughs> so this idea was actually inspired by Abdul, but uh, a lot of us are from the University of Illinois, down, down south. We have a lot of students go through the program. Many of them end up in Chicago. So it's actually an opportune way to get a bigger audience, to get more alumni in here. And I think we could make a more concerted effort to do that. I know we've done a little bit of that, but that's, that's my idea for generating people. I also, I missed it, but I saw people messing around with tools, the, the wiki thing, right? So lots of people in a room, hack session, laptops. I really like those kinds of things. I'm from design. I do a lot of rapid prototyping where we get groups of people. We make tools very quickly. I would love to see more of that kind of thing next year. I'm sorry that I missed it. There were, there's too many good things at once, I guess. So that's what I got. Jeff was very instrumental last year. We made three films about the digital divide and about community activism. And so one of the things we'll do is make those films available uh, to everyone because that's a technology that, uh, uh, well, it's in all our phones. We can make videos. So thank you, Jeff, for that. Hello. Um, as a public library employee, <coughs> I would like to see either success stories or how-to workshops to become more politically involved. For example, I know Frances has um, connections with people in her community to fund things at the library and I really have no idea how to start that so I think a lot of people would be interested in um, kind of the more political involvement within your community and how to go about starting that. Thank you. All right so I'm going to bring two ideas together. Uh, the first idea of more youth being involved I think that that is just um, elementary, as um, one of the Alejandro. Alejandro said, elementary students, high school students. Um, there's college students here. That's great, uh, but really more, more of the youth need to be here. And then to piggyback off of Jeff, and do not appoint me. No, <laughs> but um, but creating the having the youth create something here, or having us or Jeff, yes. So having yes. having um. Having the youth be creators, having us be creators, so there is actually an end product that people feel they um, were a part of, and uh, maybe that was the video, um, but having more of a share, shared creation um, end product would be something I hope to see. I got two workshops I can run. Thank you. We need more. We need two or three more people. <laughs> How about you in the very back? You haven't said anything. Come on up. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I really enjoyed the China session, so I would love to see more global network sessions in the next couple of years and, and see what we can do with um, Chicago or Illinois or in the U.S. and other countries as well. Great. Thank you. Hi everyone. I want to piggyback off what the gentleman just said. I would like a session with library professionals talking about access, and I'd like those professionals to be from another continent. Another because continent. Another continent. Another continent. When we focus on what joins us instead of what separates us, solutions get created. Uh, you see that woman in the stripe. 
she didn't hear anything you said. Um, okay, hi, can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> I would like to have a session with library professionals from another continent. Okay, we need a couple more people. Who hasn't talked? I mean, we need your ideas. Don't act like democracy means people up front are the intelligent ones and we're going to give you everything we know because that is the negation of democracy. Democracy is when you have an opportunity to get to the mic, number one. And number two is you actually come to the mic. private sector is not just the uh, what's been referred to as the gorillas in the room uh, but the previous speaker Chris Hand for example is has a business he's, a, he's in the private sector uh, and so <coughs> and in a sense the next speaker Brian Bell is partnered and is in the private sector so we need to think of the private sector really uh, from the bottom up as well as the top down it's funny all you guys are mentioning I was going to mention that the private sector um, <laughs> Uh, more representatives from the private sector, but and, and more of what have they been doing? What what do they contribute? Are there partnerships? Uh, they are doing a lot of things. There are some major corporations giving back to the community to provide access, to provide funds and grants. And so I, I'm not going to mention any names, but the private sector does does uh, uh, is, is helping. Uh, the, my other comment is next year uh, maybe talk about uh, what's working. Uh, solutions and we address a lot of problems and you know let's talk about how to fix those problems how to solve those problems more uh, 
like I was explaining to some people after my, my speak, every CTC should be out there looking at the private sector to get their end of life machines. Um, there shouldn't be a home in Chicago without a computer when there's 10,000, 20,000 computers every year going to landfills. These are workable, usable computers that can be in the homes of, of our, our communities. Okay, I need two more people in line before we close this out. I don't want to be the last one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that good. <laughs> okay, let's see. How about you? In the purple coat. <laughs> and uh, let's see here. Mm. Uh, let's invite our guest, Philip, from California to come and make a comment as well. I've heard some things kind of going around this, but um, maybe taking an opportunity to look at results next year from things that were discussed this year. So um, either from Philip's local wiki, this came out of the, uh, the digitization uh, discussion. Uh, that you know, Maybe we need to come back and look and see if, if any of these projects have gotten started and maybe have a quick status update. So look at topics to revisit and see what's been done since then. And um, I'm a big guy. Let's talk food. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I mean, I actually, I, it sounds like I'm setting up for something big, but um, I, I understand you're, you didn't charge me to come here. I mean, I'm not expecting, you know, catered lunch. If you, if you charge just a little, I mean, a, a nominal fee, maybe that could be done. But the other thing is, at other conferences, even the idea of setting up lists of like, you know, who wants to go out to lunch to Greek Town? Um, and working little, you know, getting people into small groups where they're interacting. Um, and getting the discussions away from the rooms. Um, and, and trying to find ways to get those little times between the sessions to be um, extensions of the sessions. So. Thank you. Sure. Um, I'm actually a recent Gisless grad. I just graduated in December and um, now at an elementary school on the far south side of Chicago. Um, so I came here, I got an email from Kate. I don't know how I was on that, maybe because I came last year, I don't know, signed it something. But, um, and I didn't plan on coming, but then I saw the sessions and I've been having a really hard time getting my 6th, 7th, and 8th graders engaged in library and anything. Um, so I saw the hip hop one, and that's why I came. And um, kind of what the gentleman that spoke before me, um, I'd be, that's what I'm going to use that, whatever. I'm going to take away some things. And um, I'd love to see next year other people, what they took away and how they use that in some, maybe just one session. And, you know, I'd, and um, there was one other thing. Oh, yeah, and because I am. Um, uh, public school librarian, I would like to see more stuff specifically for you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you see what an important contribution you made? Very important. I said the same thing that the was saying. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing I think of is, uh, it was touched on earlier about the format, maybe like the workshop stuff being more hands-on. Um, that I think would be, would be cool. Like when we did our little thing, only a couple people had laptops, and so it was a little difficult. Um, and then maybe we could switch up. So the format, like you were talking about, where there's someone up here and then all these people, and I'm the expert because I have a microphone. Um, you know, some conferences, there's these unconferences where there's no set agenda, and then people show up and they have sticky notes, and then they put them, and then they break out into groups, and then the groups maybe have a facilitator, but there's no particular expert, right? And so that kind of thing might be cool. But it's also nice to hear from people that do have experiences and they have slides and stuff. And so maybe just like a little bit of that each day or something, or like some, some slots in there or something. I mean, there's only so much time, so I don't know what would really be possible. But uh, it'd be cool if it was like we're all in a circle and it was kind of like this back and forth kind of thing. So. Yeah, maybe uh, in the next uh, final session, we could have some people who really got some skills do a little freestyle. You know what I mean? Sum it up for us. That is, if they have the skills. Oh, man. I hope you're all out there hearing me. You know, uh, I know this is Chicago, but, you know, you have to show it. You can't just assume it. 
Okay, great, important, makes a very important point about having a gathering, and that is to make sure everybody talks. This is almost a law, because if you think about it, in most other sessions you go to, not everybody talks. And we have to create a new norm. Everybody talks. And, equally as important, everybody listens. It's a dialectic. Talking and listening, but listening more important than talking. Because when you listen, what you say then can absorb and reflect what everybody else is thinking, and therefore your contribution will be more important. You know that kind of person that doesn't want to listen to you and you know that they're just formulating what they got to say and they're not listening to you? That's the negation of what we're trying to do. And now we have the final comments from our distinguished panel and uh, let's go in that same order. Uh, yeah, so you, you, would you like to go first or would you like to go last? Which is the honor position. Okay. Uh, So what I heard, uh, and of course uh, there's a time restriction here, is I think the conference attendant, attendees themselves are asking for more, not only inclusion of different demographic sectors, as well as more participation, uh, not just in the closing. So how are we taking into account next year's theme and the suggestions already made, how do we take those suggestions? Uh, concretely enough to perhaps take another step in our conference next year um, in making those a reality. Uh, I did hear much more about community inclusion. I heard about best practices. Uh, how do we compare or what did people uh, take away this year and can we have a status update next year? Uh, again, the demographic sectors, we heard about youth, juveniles, and formerly incarcerated being included. Um, so there were some overlapping themes that I got that I think uh, whoever starts working on the conference next year has a lot of work cut out for them, but it's also the kind of work I think to be challenging and productive. Thank you.
is focused on digital literacy equipment. Uh, we're looking for a staff person to help lead that, uh, what we call ACT, Access Computers and Training. Uh, I think it's an exciting role uh, uh, and uh, potential. Uh, and one of the things that we're talking about is a, uh, uh, a, a library in community colleges uh, uh, putting out one of the uh, categorical, potential categorical grants of uh, 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 you have to have, you have to be working in at least a library of community college combination uh, to qualify. And I think that's a very, very interesting idea because these are our two great lifelong learning institutions and they should be working more together uh, than they are. Uh, and that's one of the ideas we're exploring uh, that Francis is helping us with as well. So those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. I guess what I'm going to say is to demonstrate how our different points of view are really converging. Um, I wanted to say that the local wiki was the product of the moment today. And if you generalize from that, the thing I was hearing today and yesterday is that the commercial clouds can get blown away. They do blow away. The state agency clouds get frozen in time, like the Illinois Digital Archive. But the community is actually stepping up to take the baton and produce the online resources and the online community spaces that we need. Um, I see that both in terms of the all-volunteer organizations that are here today, the family historians, but also the grassroots of Chicago Public Library, who happen to be the librarians and the cyber navigators and paraprofessionals, who have uh, done their own form of silo busting by coming to East Chicago. And I hope we'll be able to get the top man at CPL here as a speaker next year um, to hear from all these people. So point one was the, my point about the community stepping up and these clouds are blowing away. Um, second point is going deeper into the grassroots, and I think Kang Shu from the Friends of the Library really exemplified that yesterday. Um, my third point is really about young people, young librarians, young people, those of you who consider yourself the non-elite at this conference and in Chicago. And to, to really express that, I want to go back, uh, Lord, I want to go back 70 years and quote a poem by Bertolt Brecht called Praise of Learning. And of course, you only learn by teaching, so you only listen you only learn at the conference by also talking. So here's what you have to say. Now think about migrating this to the digital age. Learn the elementary things. For those whose time has come, it is never too late. Learn the ABC. It won't be enough, but learn it. Don't be dismayed by it. Begin. You must know everything. You must take over the leadership. And I really think that's true at East Chicago as well. And you must take over the leadership. If I could reemphasize that sentence, fits with Studs Turkle's comment, take it easy, but take it, right? So the next year, in our closing panel of commentaries, not everybody will be of a certain vintage. Um, but you have, you have to take that, right? It, it can't be given to you, or else it just you know, it falls out of your pocket, and you discover you've lost it. Um, so so those, those are my three summation points, and I think there's a lot of congruence between, between what I had to down and the comments I was hearing. Um, the, the practical implementation of that um, is as follows. First of all, I have recruited three people to a formal advisory committee for East Chicago 2013. Fran and Alejandro have agreed to be co-chairs of that advisory committee, and Charles is agreeing right now to be an honorary co-chair of that advisory committee, given his other responsibilities. Um, we are going to have our first planning meeting, which will take place virtually, either by teleconference or on the web, which will be Friday, May 18th at 9 a.m., pending other conflicts. And they will be quarterly thereafter in May, September, and January, and then shift to monthly in February, March. And then the next conference will be in April. So that implements this plan early, plan ahead sort of thing. Um, this summer, we will be carrying out our first e-Beijing meeting uh, connected to a course that we're teaching at Peking University. So we expect to be able to make good on that promise of having people speak to us from abroad. Um, uh, 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 uh. And I think what I'll close with is uh, something my mother-in-law used to say, which is we may not have it all together, but together we can have it all. And that's what we should plan for here in East Chicago. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to try something that uh, we try in many cases in smaller groups. I'm going to try it this time, and I'm going to ask Abby and a couple of people to write down what they can say. Uh, we call this the word circle. 
because sometimes we're very, uh, either we have nothing to say or we have too much to say. But what would happen if we had a conversation right now and everybody could only say one word? In other words, summing up your reaction to the conference. And together, all of our words are going to constitute a poem that we'll share with everybody. Uh, so, if you'll start with Jeff, and if you would stand up when it comes your time and sing your word out so that everybody can hear you, no whispering. This has to be come from within. What do you call it? Your, 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 your energy, your chi. It has to come from your dantian. For those of you that practice Tai Chi, it has to come from your dantian. Yeah, it has to come from inside. Let's tell the story. Your first word. Eager. Eager. Inspired. Inspired. Interdisciplinary. Interdisciplinary. Participatory. Participatory. Uh, action. Action. Huh? Optimistic. Optimistic. Diversity. Diversity. Subversion. Subversion. <laughs> Cyber power. Cyber power. <laughs> Free. Free. Excited. Excited. Action. Action. Engage. Engage. Wait now. Yeah. Multiply. Multiply. People. People. Hustle. Hustle. Energized. Energized. Giving. Giving. Engagement. Engagement. Caffeine. <laughs> International. Oh. Oh. Hope. 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 Info activism. Challenged. Challenged. Revolution. Revolution. Communal. Communal. China. China. <laughs> Global. Global. Transformation. Transformation. Adrian. Empowerment. <laughs> Empowerment. Abby. Local. Local. Alejandro. Promise. Promise. Essential. Essential. Collaboration. Collaboration. Breakthrough. Unity. 